everybody. Welcome to the iOS 11 on iPhone What's New video. In this video, I'm going to go over what's new and compare many of the differences between iOS 10 and iOS 11 in relation to the iPhone with a follow-up video for iOS 11 on iPad in the next video. I won't be going over every single difference, just what I feel are the big changes and differences that people will notice. The first change in iOS 11 is in my opinion the biggest one, Control Center. Control Center has undergone a massive and welcome facelift. Instead of everything in Control Center flowing over two or three panels, everything has now been compressed to one easy to use screen that's both functional and pretty. Going over the new Control Center, in the upper left corner you have quick access to the most commonly used wireless options, but you can expand that section to see all options by a simple 3D touch. The same goes for the music player in the top right corner. The most commonly used controls are present and active, but if you'd like more detailed controls including music volume, time indicator, and airplay options, then you can just 3D touch to open the music player's details. This is a great solution. Also, you'll notice the new futuristic Star Trek TNG transporter control looking volume and brightness controls on the right with orientation lock and do not disturb to the left. Then below that additional controls that can be customized through settings where you can control what additional controls appear and what order they appear in. Really awesome improvement. And of course the one additional control they just slipped into iOS 11 is a new screen recording option. Now you can record your iPhone screen without connecting your iPhone to your Mac. Another new feature that may not be as amazing as Control Center's changes, but is still quite welcome, is a new document scanner in the Notes app. The new document scanner in Notes automatically senses and scans a document, crops the edges, and removes any tilt or glare. You can fill in the blanks or sign paperwork, then save or share it easily. You can even save it as a PDF. Super handy for filling out or signing PDF forms. Also, in iOS 11, you get new icons for the Calculator and Contacts apps, and both the App Store and iTunes Store have new icons as well, with the App Store being completely redesigned. I must say, the new App Store does look quite nice, but truthfully, I'm on the fence about this change. I didn't find anything wrong with the old one, but that's likely just personal preference. The majority of feedback has been quite positive for the new App Store, so far, from what I've heard, so I guess the change is welcome. Taking screenshots on iPhone has also been upgraded with new features in iOS 11. Now when you take a screenshot, you get a preview in the bottom left hand corner that seems to stay there for about 5 or 10 seconds. If you touch the preview it opens a new screenshot editor that lets you mark it up with various writing tools or easily share the screenshot through the share sheet. While we're talking about the share sheet briefly, there's another new option I saw on the share sheet in relation to pictures that lets you create a new Apple watch face from any picture. While playing around with this option, it seems to offer the option to create a photos watch face or kaleidoscope watch face and then personalize or set up the watch face with the desired complications. This looks really cool, but I wasn't able to fully test this feature on my Apple Watch as you need Watch OS 4 to send the new watch face to Apple Watch. But I look forward to trying this feature out in the future when both of the final versions of iOS 11 and Watch OS 4 are released this fall. While iOS 11 does bring many welcome improvements and new features, it does take a few things away that may or may not matter to you depending on how you use your iPhone. The biggest thing iOS 11 takes away that I noticed is the lack of 32-bit app support. What this means is that all of the old apps that were created to run on older versions of iOS before iOS 10 will no longer run unless they are upgraded or updated by the app developer, which means any old apps that are no longer being actively supported will not function in iOS 11. A couple of examples I run into are the first iOS He-Man game I purchased or the original Weather Network weather app I downloaded on my first iPhone that I still use occasionally when I travel to other regions to visit my family. When you try to run a 32-bit app, you get an error message letting you know that the app developer needs to update it to work with iOS 11. I do find this a little annoying, as I really miss WeatherEye and some of my older apps, but this is the price we pay for technological progress, so we just have to grin and bear it and move on. 
Another thing we lose in iOS 11 that will likely affect some users is a 3D touch app switching, where you could 3D touch on the left side of the screen and then swipe right and lift your thumb to bring up the app switcher. There has not been any official reason announced to tell us why this feature was removed. Personally, I could never quite get the hang of using this app switching method consistently, so I just stuck with double clicking the home button. But for those who did use this feature, I'm sure they will miss it. But it's not all doom and gloom. Yes, we lose some things, but we gain so much more, like the new cool control center. And one subtle change I love is how they put the bars back in the signal strength meter. I was never really a fan of the dots. In iOS 11, they also made some changes to notification center, which from what I understand is now being called cover sheet. Both the lock screen and notification center now look the same, with each notification now offering options when you swipe left or right on each. I think this is a pretty cool change. And lastly, a welcome change for AirPods users, where you can now set up each AirPod, left and right, with individual controls and the addition of some extra double tap control options. If you'd like to learn more about how iOS 11 improves your AirPods experience, check out my video, AirPods with iOS 11. I'll leave a link in the description below and a little i card above if you'd like to check that out. Well, those are the big changes I've encountered so far using iOS 11. All of the observations in this video are made using the iOS 11 public beta and of course could be subject to change upon the final release this fall. I'll be sure to do a follow-up video after the final version is released. There are other changes and differences between iOS 10 and 11 in relation to iPhone that I did not mention in this video. Are there any you think everyone should know about that I didn't include? If so, let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful or informative, why not give it a thumbs up? And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tech videos including tech how-tos every week. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.